Welcome to our lecture online and here's our next example of how to calculate the angle of momentum. Um, notice we have again a beam and let's assume again that this is a bird's eye view so this is a horizontal situation. We have a beam on a frictionless table attached at the end so that the beam can rotate. A bullet is fired at the beam 300 meters per second, mass of 20 grams, but in this case it goes right through the beam and continues on the other side 100 meters per second. So it lost some of its momentum, but that momentum, of course, was transferred to the beam, giving it an angular velocity, assuming the beam length is 2 meters and the mass of the beam is 5 kilograms. So what would be the final angular velocity in a situation like this? Again, we're going to assume that we can calculate the equivalent angular momentum of a bullet traveling in a straight line. When it gets to this point, again, we're going to assume that it's as if the bullet was going in a circular path and was moving at a tangential velocity equal to this at that very moment in time. So we can say that the initial angle of momentum is equal to the final angle of momentum. So what makes up the initial angle of momentum? Well, it would be the momentum of the bullet. So that would be um, the moment of inertia of the bullet times the angle of velocity. But of course, since it's traveling in a straight path, we have to find the equivalent angle of velocity. Let's do that over here. The tangential velocity is equal to r times omega. Omega is the angle of velocity. So the angle of velocity is equal to the tangential velocity divided by the radius. In this case, that's equal to the tangential velocity divided by the length of the beam. Whoa! So because that's, uh, a, that's the reference point to the point of rotation, right? So this would be the point of rotation. And that would be the distance away from the beam. So if we plug that in here, well, we'll do that in just a moment, plus the moment of inertia of the beam, I'll use big B for that, I'll use small b for bullet, big B for beam, times the initial angle of velocity of the beam, which of course is zero because it would be stationary, so that whole thing goes to zero, equals. Now here, since the bullet and the beam don't stay together, they will each have their equivalent angle of momentum after the collision. So here we would have the angular, the moment of inertia of the beam times the final angular momentum of the, uh, of the beam. So I'll go like this, plus the moment of inertia of the bullet after the collision times the final angle velocity of the bullet. Again, assuming that the 100 meters per second would continue in the circular path and we'll find the equivalent angular velocity in the exact same way over here, but then we use the final velocity instead of the initial velocity divided by L. All right, let's now plug in the numbers as we know them. The moment of inertia of the bullet would be ML squared. Remember, the radius would be this distance right here, which is the length of the beam. All of the mass would be at the very end, so it's ML squared times omega, which is V tangential over L over L, and that would be the initial V tangential, the initial velocity, and this L cancels out that L, so you end up with MLV. Plus zero equals the moment of inertia of the beam, which is one-third the mass of the beam times the length of the beam squared. So in that case, since it rotates about its end, that is the moment of inertia of a beam, times omega final of the beam, which is what we're looking for. That's the question mark, right? This is what we're looking for, so we'll have to solve for that. We still have this portion right here, which would be the same as what it is here. Instead, over here, it would be the final velocity of the bullet that makes up that number, so this would be equal to the mass times the length times V tangential final. Okay, since we have to solve for this, what we're going to do is we're going to take this term and subtract it from the left side. So we'll move it to the left side and then divide everything by this and then turn the equation around. So we have omega final of the beam is equal to the left side equation, which is the mass of the bullet times the length of the beam times the initial tangential velocity of the bullet minus, when we bring this term over to the left side, we get the mass of the bullet times the length of the beam times the velocity tangential final. The whole thing divided by the coefficient of this omega right here, which goes to the denominator, one-third the mass of the beam times L squared. Now notice we have an L in the numerator, an L in the numerator there, and an L squared there. So this L and this L cancels out one of those. And then we can just go ahead and plug in all the numbers as we know it. Maybe we can 
uh, factor out an M and put the 3 on top, so this is equal to 3 times the mass of the bullet times V tangential initial minus V tangential final, all divided by M times L, the mass of the beam times the length of the beam. And that should give us the final answer for the angle of velocity of the beam. So this is equal to 3 times the mass of the bullet, which is 0 0.02 kilograms, because we have to convert from grams to kilograms, times the initial velocity minus the final velocity, that would be 300 meters per second, minus 100 meters per second. And the whole thing divided by the mass of the beam, which is 5 kilograms, times the length of the beam, which is 2 meters. Okay, so 2 times 5 is 10. All right, so now we have 200 times 0 0.02, so that would be that would be 4 times 3 is 12 divided by 10, which is 1.2 radians per second. So 1.2 radians per second. Notice, even though, of course, it's a negative velocity as far as angular velocity is concerned, because it's clockwise, we just wrote it as a positive 1.2 radians per second. That's the magnitude of the velocity. But yes, strictly speaking, if you want to think about it, since that's in a clockwise direction, it would have to be a minus 1.2 radians per second. But that's just for your reference. It's equal sign. There we go. So that's how we do that. So it turns out, in this case, we have to realize that the bullet still has some equivalent angular momentum that we have to subtract from the initial so that we have the left over here is the angular momentum of the beam divide both sides by one third ml squared and we have the left over the angular velocity of the beam after the collision and that's how we do that